Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Trust Your Gut podcast. We are back with another guest today and going to be doing some uh, talking about some exciting things with food. And I think you're going to really love this. So, Erica, uh, how are you today? I'm doing well, Nicole. Thanks for asking. We chatted a little bit before, very short amount of time before we press that record button. And I'm really excited about today's show um, because today we have Claudia Ricci on the show. And um, with a name like that, I don't know how you can't be an author of a book, period. (laughs) But that is one of her titles under her belt. She is an author of the Living Well Without Lectins cookbook. And she's also a health coach like Nicole and I. I have followed her on Instagram since 2017 when I started my lectern-free lifestyle, and I've been inspired by all of the recipes and beautiful pictures she bombards her feed with. Her website has numerous recipes, lectern-free cooking guidelines, articles, so many helpful tips, recipes upon recipes. She has interviews, guides, meal plans, and I mean so much more. It is an excellent website. So, In fact, till this day, I always look at our vegan five day fasting meal plan as like a guide and inspiration when I do it every four months or so. Um, Without taking any more time, Claudia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. It has been one of my top priorities to get you in because you brought out that book and it was, I mean, your recipes are great. I have had lots of success not only recreating them, but also using them as base for my own personal recipes. So thank you so much for everything you've put out there and shared with the world. Um, First of all, I'd like to start with you telling our audience a bit about yourself. Where are you from? Where do you live? Who's Claudia? So um, I'm from Romania. Uh, Now uh, I live in Denmark. but I started creative in my kitchen when uh, while living in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Uh, and before that, I lived in Dubai for eight years. <laughs> wow. Uh, before that, I lived in France, and yeah, so it's I've been everywhere. It's amazing. So we need to add I, world traveler to your title. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love Denmark. I lived in Denmark when I was um, seventeen for like a summer for like three months it was beautiful love Denmark yeah summer in the summer is beautiful yeah (laughs) very good so you were in Texas until recently and then when did you get to Romania so we uh we left two years ago from Dallas and then uh we spent some time in Denmark we spent the summers in Denmark and then for the winter, we went to uh, my parents in Romania because it was all the COVID situation. And so, yeah, it was a little bit um, <laughs> weird, but I think it all for it's all for the best because we I got to spend so much time with my parents that otherwise would have been impossible. So that's great. That's uh, looking at the half glass full, right? Oh, right. definitely. Yeah, that was yeah, that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So obviously, the connection between you and I came from the lectin free sort of journey. So what brought you to the actual lectin free lifestyle? And how long have you done this for? I always forget the year, but I think it's 2017. I started. Um, I mean, yeah, that's the year when the book was published, right? Uh, The book was published in April and I found out uh, about the book in July. Mm -hmm. Um, I was approaching my birthday and I was a little bit like, you know, before our birthday was kind of (laughs) reflect a little bit more than usual on some things. And um, I had some... I can't say I had health problems, but I was starting to gain some weight um, and, you know, the usual um, aging effects. Exactly. That's what the (laughs) the doctors are saying, right? It's normal. So uh, it was late. I was in my late 30s. So, yeah, that kind of, you know. 
like you the, right time, extra pounds you didn't think of exactly and it's like inflammation and that kind of stuff that um and at the same time i was a um i was a i was a healthy eater so i was i wasn't someone who was you know crazy and like doing all i was i had a yoga practice like a daily yoga practice and so i i was like doing all these things but at the same time i didn't feel like an improvement or i i just felt like every three months i had to buy a new pair of jeans kind of uh -huh. you know which is uh yeah it's not and it's not like i like to say that sometimes it looks like it's about weight but not really it, it's it's about like noticing that something is different with you and as usually the first sign you see it's the weight mm -hmm. especially as a woman you kind of notice because i if you can't wear a pair of pants they used to love them it's kind of like okay what's happening here it's easy to focus on the weight right i mean i think erica and i are both saying the weight is a symptom of another Issue. exactly exactly yeah yeah but somehow i mean i'm grateful for that because that's how you i saw and actually no i was ignoring that i didn't want to wait myself mm -hmm. but then i went to a i went to a, a consultation with the doctor and um you know then you have to wait yourself like it's part of the yeah the thing right so then when i saw like it was the high the heaviest i've ever been like uh, since forever so i was like oh my god i just what's happening here so that was kind of a wake-up call and then i started to read a little bit um no i started to kind of be open because i never done a diet before I, I was just like you know eating like everything in moderation kind of stuff yeah. right so I started to be open to this kind of things. And then this interview with Dr. Stephen Gundry came up on my Facebook feed. Okay. Um, and then it just caught my attention. Yeah. And I wasn't like, I wasn't even aware what paleo is, or I, I've never been into diets or all that. So I didn't know. So just suddenly this kind of, it was something about what if healthy foods are making you sick or something along yeah. those lines. And I knew I was eating kind of healthy, or at least I was trying. So I was like, okay, maybe, maybe something <laughs> I'm doing is not right. So then I read the the interview that was in Goop, and um, I was like, I ordered the book, and then the book was delayed, and oh, no. it just like it got lost. So I I received a message from Amazon saying that it got lost and um they asked me if i want a reimbursement and you know what i thought at that time i was like oh it's okay that means it was not meant to be like oh my god it's just like anyway this diets you know i don't care about diets so and then amazon reimbursed me and kind of the second day i got the book oh wow. somehow it just <laughs> it just showed up so i was like okay this is a sign so i have to yeah so I couldn't put it down. I, I guess you know the feeling. Like I was just so mind blown with everything I was reading. I was yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, it's been sort of proven that weight is sort of a, a symptom of being sick. You know, people are sick first and then they become overweight or then they gain weight. And right. the reason why they know that is because um, twenty percent of the population who's overweight is not metabolically un unhealthy, right? So right. The weight yeah. is just sort of a, a a sign. And while it's great, it's great to lose it. It's not so much because you're losing the weight, but because you're you're returning that metabolic flexibility right. and exactly. becoming healthy again. So yeah. I think that's really important to mention. I always say that because you know this is about health, and Nicole and I are very strongly standing for that that what we speak of is to make you healthier to make you live for longer with right. no issues so what after you started this diet which is interesting that you had never really thought about dieting in the past uh what what are like maybe three major changes that you noticed pretty soon after you started i mean obviously the weight just <laughs> melted off so it, but i think you know speaking of weight I, it was isn't as much as weight 
I, for me, I think it there was a lot of water retention, uh, mm-hmm. so I was swollen kind of. So that that's I, I don't think it was there was fat also, but it was a lot of liquid. Like I just felt that, like in two weeks, mm-hmm. I lost like three kilograms or something like that. So it was very, and I could feel like I could see myself that I wasn't swollen anymore. So weight loss was the first, uh, the first thing that happened. Yeah, for sure. And then, oh, and then the most important for me, and actually the one that convinced me that this is working, it was um, two weeks after I started, I had a job, I was doing photography at the time, I was at a yoga conference and my period was supposed to come and all my life I had this like super painful periods and like horrible, I had to be in bed and I couldn't do anything around that time and if I had to do something I had to take like um, ibuprofen and all those like, you know, and I was so nervous and I knew Dr. Gundry said like, don't take any of those pills. And I was like, okay, what am I going to take for this pain? So I was looking for alternatives, like, you know, natural medicine. I bought a few stuff and, and then I was, I remember I was at this yoga conference taking pictures and my period came and I didn't have pain, which is for the first time in my life. And like, what, I was 37 at the time. Yeah. For the oh, first yeah. time in my life. <laughs> that was crazy for me. I, I was, okay, and I did not expect this. I, mm-hmm. I never thought that diet could have an impact on that kind of stuff. Not, not even in a million years. So, yeah. That yeah, I think me. as a woman, I mean, you can fit nice in your jeans. Uh, your face isn't puffy anymore. You look rested and you're period pains are gone. I mean, throw it all up in there. I'm good. <laughs> right? I'm signing Can we get up. Any better? Right. <laughs> and you know, when people ask me, like, why do you do this? I'm like, uh, okay, that's obvious. I never want to go back to <laughs> the way I used to feel for like a week, a month yeah. before. So no, I mean, so five years after that, going sort of along with that question, you know, are you noticing any other changes still, or maybe something that's come up within the last year that you've noticed that's been better um, with that? I think you and I are sort of on the same boat in that sense that, I mean, I had plenty of things that were wrong, but nothing was medically on the book sort of stated, right? But there was definitely a lot of things that weren't driving me to a healthy state and I didn't feel healthy. I didn't feel good. Um, but people will still ask me like, okay, well, you're so skinny and, uh, you're, you know, you, you, you're good. Like why not go and eat, go back to eating the burgers and the ice cream and all of the stuff and sleep in and forget about seeing the sun. So for you, what are those things that maybe are keeping you there? Um, you mean they're keeping me, uh, with your healthy lifestyle um so why i don't give up yeah that, why don't you give up why, 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 because we I, the, I mean, I'm, the, I'm aware of I, I mean now i know so much about the human body and i know so much about my body um and i'm aware that if i will change that um i would not feel and it's not only about how i feel right now but I also do this for longevity, for not in the sense that I want to live like 200 years, but like in the sense that the, as long as I live, I want to be functional. Like I don't want to be someone who um, don't have their brain function, <laughs> like someone who can walk, someone who, you know, I want to, I want that quality of life. And I know that, I mean, I know that's the only way you can achieve that. So I agree that doesn't mean I'm that. like, you know, like if there is an opportunity for me to do something that is not exactly in line with this, you know, now I'm, I'm more relaxed, I'm more flexible. I know what to do if um, I eat something. I also know that, you know, it's not like you ate something and suddenly you just, 
you know, you everything can't goes down the drain, it. right? No, it's not like that. It's at least it's not for me. So, um, but yeah, just staying. I, I agree. I think that a lot of times, you know, there it is okay to step away from the, you know, where you can't go into every situation and expect everybody to, you know, have the same uh, cooking. Uh, procedures or cook with the same ingredients and there are times where you step away I, for me yes I mean does my do I become sick out of having three days out of the way I eat no I don't become metabolically sick but I do have things that come out of that I have rashes that appear on my skin my sleep is not quite the same um, you know it I do have things that pop up from eating a certain way. My stomach right. gets upset if I eat the wrong things, right? So, but no, it, it's not like I become sick out of having those things. And so, yes, like you say, it's okay to step out of those uh, lines at some point. And you are aware when you've done it for so long, you know what's coming right. and you know what to do. Right. Yeah. Um, charcoal pills always help. <laughs> so, but it, it also, I don't feel like, um, I feel like it's very important um, not to have this, um, I mean, not to get to the other extreme like where you have food fears and because I've, I've been, I haven't been there luckily, but I've been close. So I know that it can, it can go the other way. And I don't think that's okay either. So we just have to, plus, you know, with, with all this lifestyle and traveling and, um, you know, going and visit friends and family and you know there's always ways to like i do not get stressed about these things because if i did i mean uh, that defeats the purpose yeah, of wanting to be healthy so yeah yeah i agree the shift happens at the beginning in terms of getting yourself back to a healthy uh, lifestyle and then you kind of shift from there how do you feel about that nicole do you feel like you how often do you step out of bounds let's just say mm. Well, for me, not very often. How, however, because of the hormone situation, I, um, I will eat, like, I typically don't eat a whole lot of carbohydrates, but I will eat them, um, maybe mid cycle to help progesterone production and to help me sleep. Cause that's my big challenge. Um, so every couple weeks I'll eat something out of the ordinary, um, like a couple nights ago, I had potatoes, a plate of potatoes with my fish and, and shrimp. So that's a little bit unusual for me, but yeah, I mean, we, we definitely see the change, right? Like for me, it's a whole bunch of water retention the next day, but I slept like a queen. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, right. But yeah, I, I feel like most people do ebb and flow a little bit through their dietary practices. And, you know, we, we, kind of change a little bit as we go, you know, our, our physiology does change a little bit. And so maybe our needs change a little bit. And so maybe we intuitively change a little bit. Uh, that's my thought. Great. Yeah. So for everybody who's new around, first of all, thanks. And, you know, just as a reminder, Nicole actually uh, came to this health journey as a, in a different route than I did. She had ulcerative colitis and she uh, healed through carnivore diet which is not something that I am interesting. ever yeah. sort of walking the line in, but you know, we, we're both trying to find the healthiest way to maintain that, that quality of lifestyle that Claudia spoke about a few minutes ago. And we have families and we have our situations. And like she said, you change, you age, there are different needs. And with that said, you have your husband, he follows the lifestyle as well. Um, no, he doesn't in the sense that like, um, I mean, um, how can I say he eats what I cook, we right. eat together, uh, we cook together. Um, so most of the time he's, yeah, without knowing, <laughs> I mean, he knows very well what I'm doing and he knows everything right now, but just like, it's not something and it came with time. Mm -hmm. So he was very supportive of me, but it was never like, oh, I'm also going on this diet. So, but now it's, you know, he's much healthier because of that. And, um, but yeah, if he goes out and he gets something like a burger or from a place, yeah. 
Yeah. So I think so, a lot of times I'll get questions from women that are like, well, how do I do this when my husband, you know, he's not going to stop eating the cereal or he's not going to stop doing that. And I like to bring that up because um, we're all sort of on the same boat, right? We do our right. thing. And then eventually people sort of climb up on the board. And even at, uh, like you said, even if your husband doesn't a hundred percent go there, he's eating at least two, maybe three meals, depending on what household out of what you're cooking. So, you know, you share the wealth on that sense. And once they start feeling better, they probably will make less choices on the other side. Yeah, that's different. I mean, he, um, he's aware of everything that even if he chooses to eat something, he knows you know um what it does and um i i mean i think this is one of the you, you're right a lot of people don't start because they think oh but it's impossible to do it if my husband doesn't do it or my kids or but i'm just saying like start anyway because they will you know eventually i mean it took five years but i don't care like i mean it's you live this life like it's not a it's not a race right i mean mm -hmm. but with time he you know he like his lifestyle improved his diet improved because in our home it's only you know the food that i store is the food that i right. eat right and then there is like maybe a little things here and there but like nothing um major and then if we go somewhere out, he will eat whatever, but still he knows how to make the better choice. Very good. How but, about you, Nicole? Well, I was actually wondering if um, I myself, I mean, I, I live at home alone with my daughter. So for me, it's pretty easy. Um, but my partner and I eat the same foods. So it's not, that's not an issue for me, but I'm fine with eating whatever, you know, eating a little separate from my family. And my daughter is a night owl. She eats super late. So we, we tend to not eat at the same times and not eat exactly the same foods. But I was wondering, uh, Claudia, if you, you know, you're talking about with your families and foods you keep around, do you have, do you want to give an example for our listeners of maybe, um, what, uh, one of your go-to meals is? Oh, that's, that's very hard because uh, since I'm a recipe creator, uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, <laughs> I, it has to always be different, uh, but also as a, I'm the type who likes to eat different things all the time. Mm -hmm. um, even if I like something, I would eat it once, twice, but then I just need something new. And that helps probably that's why I also this works for me because I'm curious so to create new yeah. dishes, new. But then we have things we like every season and also depending on where we live. Because mm -hmm. we love to go to the farmer's market and to eat the local foods. And uh, for example, we love uh, in the summer in, that, in Denmark, somehow we really love everything that is like a tabbouleh kind of salad we make it with millet and hemp seeds uh, and then of course we don't use tomatoes and cucumbers but i have a recipe we use a lot of parsley and chives and uh pomegranate and um yeah so olive oil olives and then we do a little bit of meat next to it like it can be chicken kebabs or it can be lamb or it can be even steak or tacos kind of ground beef style so mm -hmm. that's something we both really love and yeah okay nice. that sounds delicious right yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. and we eat so, a lot of salads all the time whatever there's always a big salad no matter what so obviously author is underneath your titles of things that you do but had you ever written a recipe book before this one no <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I, was, I commend you on it. I mean, really. I was the type who would never write down anything and um I would just wing the recipe. So I even if I looked at the recipe, I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, fine, fine. And then I'll just put like as much as I want. And and yeah. then it was very actually when I started the plant paradox, I was starting to cook this different recipes. And I started my Instagram account because i would realize that i cooked something i liked and then in three days i had no idea what it was 
Oh. So I'm like, okay, I need to make that again, but what was it? So it was very hard. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start an Instagram account and I'm going to keep like the picture and like a little bit about the dish mm-hmm. so I can remember. So that's, that's why I started my Instagram account. Yeah. Very fun. Very fun. And from there you got a book. I mean, how hard was it to write a book? Because it's still on my dream to do list. So how, what's it going to take for me to do this? I, I don't know. First, the publisher. <laughs> okay, publisher, check. <laughs> right. Yeah. Actually, I didn't. I didn't really plan. I mean, uh, well, after I started my Instagram, I I said, you know, never say never. But I am the kind of person who always says like, oh, I'll never make a website. I don't like websites. Like, I'll make a book. That's what I said at that time. I'm more, more like old style. And then, um, but then more followers came and a lot of people were asking me for recipes and it's very hard to share from Instagram. You know how it is yeah. like you have to go down and and um, then I realized I need a website. <laughs> so I started the website and then like two years after that, um, I think two years, one year and a half, a publisher contacted me to write the book. So that kind of came naturally. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so then you have. And what it takes, I don't know. What it takes, I mean, a cookbook is not really like an, uh, it's not like another type of book, right? Where Like a novel or, um, so you just have to have a lot of content, a lot of recipes. It's good if you can take the pictures yourself. Yeah. Um, it helps. Um, which was a bonus for you because you have photographer under your belt as well. Right. And I wanted to, I mean, I was never too good at food photography because it's just a kind of a different type of photography. But I, I just, I took it as an opportunity to develop this kind of um, photography style. So Your pictures are great. Your colors on your food are always great. I think we always eat with our eyes first and foremost. Yeah. And, and I believe that. Yeah. It's important. And I think one of the things I like about the changes that I've made in my diet through this has been that, I mean, there is a lot of green on my plate, I will admit to that. Mm -hmm. But there's also like a lot more other colors and shapes of foods that weren't in there when I was growing up. And it's just, it's very pretty. And I absolutely love that about it. So many vegetables out there in the world. So what tricks do you have? for living this lifestyle, what what has helped you the most? Is it menu planning? Is it reading multiple books? What what have you found that has been uh, making it easier for you to keep up with it? I think it's having an open mind, to be honest, and staying. I think that's and staying curious and don't take this as a, a like a restriction. You know, it's not, I I do not consider, I restrict myself. On the contrary, I I go with, I'm so excited. Like for me, food, like uh, food in the real form, right? It's it's like every time I go to a supermarket or farmer's market, I was like, oh my God, this is new. I want to try this. (laughs) I want to cook with it. I want to search cookbooks and see and on internet and see what people make with this i'm interested in culture food like um what's like, typical in denmark or in Romania exactly or, or yeah so um yeah that's i think that's very important like i think just, that you recently were talking about nettle leaves and they must be pretty popular where you're at nobody uses nettle leaves but that's definitely um, from, I mean, well, in Romania, <laughs> in Romania, are very popular, and you find them everywhere. But they are also popular in Denmark. Um, I think you just have to um, pick them yourself, and it's kind of like, ooh. <laughs> uh, but not uh, in yeah. America. They are not popular around here. You know, it's not something that even ha- even in the farmers markets. You find nettle leaves, Nicole, in your farmers market? I have once before in San Diego. And for those listening, nettle leaf is you might also know it as stinging nettle. And the reason she cringed about it is because when you pick it, it can sting your hands. It has formic acid in the leaves. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think it's hard to find. But I know that in the Pacific Northwest, it's much more common. Um, and in some of the northern latitude, which is probably climate climate-wise very similar to Denmark. Yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah. So, and we use nettle leaf. I use nettle leaf tea and I use it for detoxification and all that stuff. So yep. I don't have the actual nettle leaves here that I mess with, but hey. You also find powder, um, yes. natural powder. Yeah. If you want to use good. that. Yeah. So you've had a book, you have your website that you said you were never going to make. You've got traveling under your belt. Do you have any fun future plans that you know of maybe opening a restaurant um <laughs> uh, actually there's another book coming okay uh, yeah so uh we are working on it right now um but no restaurant you know it's very hard because it's a very it's a very location related thing right so you have to be that kind of person that leaves in the same place all the time and yeah. doesn't plan to move and you have a community around you that you want to well i mean i'm i'm much happier to reach a very big community worldwide which would be impossible with a restaurant right so That's i kind true. of need to focus on my ways to do that which is obviously the internet and um does online okay so platform. claudia was not the one but i'm gonna keep searching because we need more restauranteurs that do this so that people can go out and feel comfortable with what they're eating and yeah. um if i ever get the courage to do this then i will definitely contact you and maybe you can help me set up the menu definitely i even um i just recently had someone in new york contacted me um they just opened a restaurant that is plant paradox friendly so there is i've seen um i have an article on the website um with plant paradox uh, restaurants uh in new york and then tips on how to eat out um, so i mean and in general everywhere i've been like if you go to a good restaurant um, usually Italian, Greek, kind of this Mediterranean style, uh, even steakhouses, um, you, f you find what to eat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, I think the Italian and the Mediterranean is really nice because their oils will likely be the right oil. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's one of the hardest part. Yeah. Well, Claudia, thank you so very much. Before I let you go, I have one last question. And the reason why I always ask this question is because mental health is in fact extremely important for society to work properly. And our gut microbiome is very, very connected to our mental health. And so I wanna make sure that everybody out there has ways to de-stress and maybe laugh a little bit to bring about some of that calmness. And so I ask you, what is it that makes you laugh uncontrollably? <laughs> uh, the most awkward question you could get on a podcast <laughs> right yeah i mean usually i cannot say what it is because it's usually stupid stupid things i i see on the internet or like or something stupid that someone says so yeah i mean animals usually make me laugh like um i love cats and dogs and so when i see them being like you know silly or that makes me laugh yeah very good so outer character um actions from animals will be definitely what'll get claudia going that's great i think it's amazing that you can find something too that um is not attached to a lot of things that you can just kind of go to if you're having a bad day you know you can always uh, that's where social media is actually kind of nice right because you can always go and scroll and find your happy for even just five minutes and that will extend and be positive for the rest of your day right. yeah Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today, Claudia. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It was very nice talking to you. Yeah. In the show notes, we're going to have plenty of places where you can find Claudia. So make sure that you check her out. Uh, like I said in the beginning, her website is really amazing. If you're looking to just start this, there is a really, really good base on what to do and how to do it and plenty of fun, exciting recipes to try out. So check her out. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye.